Okie dokie, and we meet again. This is video number four of our Move Language for Smart Contract tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to take a look at function visibility. It is very important for us to understand that there are certain function visibility attributes that we have to define in a Move module. A lot of security aspects that we have to take in consideration when we define those visibility types. Let's not waste any more time and let's move. And for that, I have to do a quick whiteboard. So let's picture our module. Okay. So we got, let's assume this is our address, right? And this address is my address. It's net to the ADDR, right? When we create modules inside move, we can associate those modules to the same address, which means that now inside this address, I can make one module. I can say module one. I can also say module two. I am deploying multiple contracts using the same address. Okay. And I can finally say three. If let's say this module, let's assume that this module is storing data for, let's say a DeFi platform, a staking platform, whatever is the case. And I have a function here that will allow me to read data from whatever the struct or the storage in this module one is. So I'm going to say read data. Let's assume that that is a function and uh, returns a string value, right? Let's just assume that it's going to return a string and then we will say return data. Now, if we take a look, let me zoom in. If we take a look at this module, right? This function can only be called from that module one because it's a function that is private. If we are not assigning any visibility whatsoever to that function, that function can only be accessed from the module itself. It cannot be accessed by any other module. So module two or module three, they cannot access that particular function. Okay. However, if we place public, right? If we place public, then we should be able to say from module two. Okay. Now I want to do this. I can say use net to the ADDR, remember, this is how we reach that account. And from there, I want you to get me read data, okay? And now when I do that, I should be able to call this function. If I have a function here that says get data, that function calls let result equals read data, and we pass, you know, whatever is the argument, then we should be able to call that function. Why? Because it has been set as public. That is good and bad. It is good and bad because yeah, it gives you that flexibility to separate functions. So if you have a lot of logic going on on your contracts, then you want to separate modules, right? But one problem that you will face, and it's a more of a security concern, is that let's say we have another account somewhere in the blockchain, right? We have another account that is not even us, but it's on the blockchain. That account, let's call this Bob. If that Bob account decides to create a module and that that Bob account also decides to get this address and call our module, then they could effectively do the same thing. They can say results and they can say uh, read the data, right? By the way, this has to be different. Get data, read data, right? And whatever is the case. So now that function can be called from another address. That's not necessarily your module. And that is a problem, right? How can we fix this? We can fix this by still letting it be public because we are definitely going to have multiple modules calling this function. I can define this to be friend. Now the function is still remaining public, but now I have to specify who can make calls to that public function. Not everyone, which means what? I will have to define who can make calls into this particular function. Under module, the source module where this function is located, I can say friend, and I'm going to now define which address and which module can make calls to this function, okay? So I'm going to say net to def ADDR, and I am going to say two. Now with this, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I do friend and I define this value, this module two can effectively make calls to this, right? This module cannot make calls to module one and same goes with module three. Okay. That is the logic. That is the logic behind friend. 
I have to define who is allowed, who's a friend of this particular function to be able to make calls to this function. Got it? Awesome. Let's see it live. Let's do it. Okay, so what we did previously was work with the Boolean types and the address type. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to build another module. Let's call this sample three. And by the way, I'm going to also co comment this so this doesn't run. Let's go back. Now let's call this sample three move okay so now let's work with that visibility one thing that we can do in the move language is that we can define multiple modules inside one file inside one move file i can say address right and i can still point to net to def addr so i can do that then inside this address i can now say module one and i can work with module one i could also say module two right and finally i can say module three Let's work with three modules right here, okay? Awesome, so this is a valid syntax. I can actually do this. What I can do here is that on module one, we are going to have a function, right? That it's defined as the following. It's going to be called function get value, right? And this function is just going to pass out a value and it's going to be an integer 64. And all I'm going to do is just return 100, okay? And we wanna make sure from this module two and three, we can access this value. Okay, now from module two, in order for me to access this module one function, I will have to do use, right? So we do use net to def ADDR, and now I can say get value. But here's the problem this is not public which means that I cannot access that function outside of my local module. I have to define this to be public, okay? Now I should be able to definitely have access to that particular function, okay? Awesome, let's test. Let's see if we are able to get 100 called by module number two. Again, we're going to define a test down here and this test will be function test function. And now we are going to say let result equals get value. Okay. And we are effectively calling this function, which has been imported from my net to def address. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I'm forgetting one thing. This is the address. This is the account, but this is not the module. So I have to, I have to do this. I have to do one and now I have to do get value. Okay. So that is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, is passing it down here natively. So I can also do that. Okay. So let me do this. So I can do it this way and then I'll show you how to do it this way. And now now in module two, I want to print, right? Because we want to see the output. So I'm going to say test only, remember on the last video, and we are going to say use STD debug, boom, boom, and print. Beautiful, now I can print. I'm gonna say print and we are going to say result, okay? Awesome, we should obtain 100 from module one and print it on module two. Let's see, let's go. Okay, let me do aptos, let me do compile first. Move compile. Okay, so we are having a couple of issues. Oh, you know what? Sample two probably is still running that test. Let me fix that. So I'm gonna go back here. It's good that we have issues sometimes. Uh, so I'm gonna save this and I'm also going to comment this. Boom, awesome. Okay, now we should be fine. Uh, go back, let me see if we clear those errors out. Okay, so we are looking way better. Okay, so I don't need to have that semicolon. So let me fix that. Okay, back here. Compile. Beautiful. We were able to compile, but we're seeing unused use of alias get value. Okay, I think I know why this is. It's because I am defining module one, module two, and module three on the same move file or syntax, right? So I don't need to import it because it's already inside move file, right? So I should be good like this. Okay, go back. Awesome, we don't have any errors. Okay, now, and you can see here that it's it's compiling one, two, and my three modules that I defined under that third sample file, okay? Now let's take a look and see if we can test. Okay, so I'm gonna say use net to def addr one get underscore value. Now let's uh, give it a shot. There we go, we got something, awesome. It's use alias get value. I know what's going on. So I'm gonna say net to def ADDR one get value. Let me see if that clears the picture. Boom, awesome. Okay, how do we import from other functions? We can also do this. We can say address module name 
and then the function itself and what we obtained was result. That is awesome. But here's the problem. Check this out. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy it and we're going to head to module number three and we are going to do the same thing. OK, I'm going to save it clear and let me try to compile once again and we should obtain two test returns. OK, there we go. We got two test returns from module number two. We obtain 100 module number three. We obtain 100. That is a problem. Why? Because anyone publicly can make calls into that function that we are defining as public. Well, let's fix that. Let's apply friend and only define who can make calls into that public function. So in module one, this is where that function is located. I have to define friend and I'm going to say net to def ADDR and I am going to define which module can make calls to that function. I'm going to say two. Two can make calls to that function. Here on the public, we have to also define that this is friend, meaning that only whoever is part of this list of friends can make call to that function, else it's not going to be able. We are going to leave two and three. We should obtain an error on three. Test. And sure enough, it is happening because we have module number three trying to call get value and that it's not allowed. How do we fix that? We are going to fix that by also providing function visibility a friend to module number three. Let me go ahead and try it again. Boom. You like that. I know you like that. Finally, there's another visibility that we have to work with. And it's very important for us to understand. This visibility is called view. When we define the attribute of view to a function, that means that that function is going to be queried either outside of the blockchain or internally. But that function will not update storage. It's a read function. It's a function to just obtain output and read output. OK, very important for us to understand that when we define a view function, this is usually for applications that will require some constant querying of data from a module. Let's say you have a backend that needs to be showing token prices and those token prices are updated or are stored inside that move smart contract or are constantly updated. We want to read those values. Then we have to make sure that we define this to be view because view it's a non payable. It's basically a get to that function and we should obtain the values that have been stored in that particular module. OK, so in order for me to do that, I can just say attribute. I can say view and I can now define this public and I can say function get prices. OK, I, I can do that. If it's going to return me an integer value, then you can do that and then you do whatever statement you have to do for that function. OK, this is very important. Also, we are definitely going to be working with view because at the end of this whole tutorial series, we are building dApps that will integrate with the Aptos blockchain and move. OK, now it's time for a quiz in which module should we define the friend statement to allow other modules to access a particular function? A, B, C, or D? Well, if you answer A, you are correct. We have reached the end of video number four. On video number five, we are going to discuss error handling and loops. See you on video number five.